Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you're doing well. Today's project is going to be super easy. We're going to be making this gorgeous sparkly bracelet. It features beautiful faceted quartz crystals with an impressive AB finish. But the best part about this bracelet is that it's adjustable because it has an extended chain, which makes it the perfect gift for Christmas because you don't have to know the person's wrist size. I'm also going to show you how to use French wire instead of a wire guardian. So let's get started with today's project. Here are the beads we're going to be using for today's bracelet. I have some gorgeous faceted quartz beads that I got at a gem show. The International Gem and Jewelry Show comes to my area several times a year, so I'm lucky enough to be able to go to it. And these actually have an AB finish. They're absolutely gorgeous. Look at this, guys. Look how sparkly they are. And look how the light reflects off those facets. These are absolutely stunning. They measure about seven millimeters in size. I know it's an odd size, but that's a common thing at these gem shows. They don't always carry the usual sizes of six, eight, and 10 millimeters. Now this one here is a Swarovski Elements Crystal. I was going through my stash the other day and I came across it. I think you can still get them on the market, but they're a little bit expensive. But nothing beats the beauty of Swarovski crystals. Let me show you. I'll put it on my rod. Look at how beautiful this crystal is. It is so gorgeous. It has an AB finish as well, but the clarity of the crystal is unbelievable. I really love Swarovski. Too bad they're not manufacturing anymore for the general public or small businesses but you can still find them here and there. But anyway, this one measures five millimeters in size. We're gonna be attaching an extended chain to the bracelet and I'm gonna use this crystal at the end of that chain to make it a little bit more attractive. Let me show you what else we're gonna need. I'm gonna be using a small piece of French wire today and that's what this is. And actually I was using this before I used wire guardians and I don't know why I stopped using it because I really love it. Basically what it is is a fine gauge coil wire and it acts as a safeguard to prevent wear and tear on your threading material. It's usually used with silk and other beading cords, but you can use it with beading wire as well. But I think the finished look is much nicer than a wire guardian. Let me show you. I'm not sure if you can see that it's actually a coil. It's difficult to see that it's a coil, but maybe when I do the video editing, I can zoom in and show you. And there's actually a lot of misinformation out there about French wire. You may see it listed as bullion wire and that's totally different. So if you go on Amazon looking for French wire, stay away from the ones that say bullion wire because it's a whole different thing. Some people call it GIMP as well and that's also very different from French wire. And I know there are several brands out there but the two brands that I usually use is either Beadsmith or Beadalon and the diameters are also very confusing because I think Beadalon lists the inner diameter whereas Beadsmith usually lists the outer diameter. The best thing to do is to look for French wire that's listed as fine, medium, or heavy. This one's actually medium. But anyway, I'll show you how to use it. And we're only going to need about an inch worth of French wire. And here I have a few more items. I have an extended chain. I have a lobster clasp, two crimp bead covers, and a ball head pin. I actually got this extended chain on Amazon. I bought this box about maybe five years ago. And look how many I still have. And as you can see, they come in different colors. Bright silver, dark silver, bronze, gunmetal yellow gold and rose gold. And I believe you can still get these on Amazon if you search for extended chain. In addition to these items, we're also gonna be using some beading wire and some crimp tubes, but I'll bring those out later on when we get ready to use them. The first thing we're gonna do is determine how many beads we need for the bracelet. Now I have small wrists, so now I'm gonna need about five and a half inches worth of beads. Keep in mind that the clasp, the French wire, and the crimp bead covers are gonna to add to the overall length, which is about an inch. So by the time I finish my bracelet, it'll actually be six and a half inches long. So you're gonna to have to figure out how many beads you need for yourself. Although since we're attaching an extended chain, it's not as critical. Another thing you have to take into account are the size of the beads. The larger the beads are, the more of the inner diameter they're gonna take up. Generally speaking, if they're six millimeters or smaller, you don't have to worry about that. But if they're larger than that, you should take that into account. 
and these are seven millimeters, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. But anyway, to figure out the length, you can use a scrap piece of beading wire or a beading board. I'm gonna use my magic rods. I carry these in my Etsy store, and this is the nine inch long rod. I do carry 12 inch rods as well, and you'll see me using these quite a bit in my tutorials. I like to use them because they're sturdy. They're made out of steel and they hold all kinds of beads. They hold small beads, large beads, bead caps, beads of all shapes and sizes. But anyway, like I said, if you don't have one of these, you can just use a piece of scrap beading wire or your beading board. So let me go ahead and load some beads on this rod. As you can see, I've loaded all my beads. So now let me go ahead and measure it. It measures almost six and a half inches, which is a little bit too much. Like I said, you need about an inch less to accommodate for the clasp and everything. And by the way, I have these little stoppers at the end. That's another nice thing about these rods. I'm able to bring the beads in close by using those stoppers. So let me go ahead and remove some beads. I'm gonna remove the stopper. And I think I'm gonna remove three beads. So let's see how long it is now. It's a little bit over five and a half inches, which is what I want. So now let me get the beading wire. I'm gonna be using Beadalon, and this is 49 strand wire, and it's 0.015 of an inch thick, or 0.38 millimeters, and it's in a silver or gray color, as you can see. But what I like about this brand is that they always tell you what size tube to use. And as you can see, I need number size two crimp tubes. I've cut myself a 10 inch piece. I recommend that you give yourself two inches extra at each end for the crimping. I'm gonna place one of these clamps at the end so I don't lose my beads. You can use a bead stopper if you want to. I like these clamps because I can get a whole bunch real cheap on Amazon. So now I'm gonna offload from the rod directly onto my beading wire. Just like that. And you can do it in multiples because the rod holds the beads in alignment. So let me keep loading these. So now that I've loaded my beads onto my beading wire, I'm gonna cut myself a couple of pieces of French wire. And I think I'm gonna cut myself two pieces that are three eighths of an inch long each. Something like that. So now I'm gonna come in with my flush cutters and snip off a piece. So now let me cut another piece. You do want to make sure that they're identical. Let me just make sure. And they look about the same. Here are my beetle on size number two crimp tubes. Here's my lobster clasp. And here's my extended chain. And I have two crimp tube covers. The first thing I'm gonna load is a crimp tube. And then my French wire. And now the clasp. As you can see, the French wire goes through the loop of the clasp just fine. And now I'm gonna take my beading wire and thread it back through the crimp tube. And now I'm gonna take out the slack. You do wanna make sure that your beading wire isn't crossed inside that crimp tube. 
like this. And now using my Xeron crimping pliers, I'm going to place the crimp tube in the first notch, which is the one that creates the U shape. Like this. Take out the slack. Make sure you don't squash that French wire. And now I'm going to squeeze. As you can see, it folded the crimp tube over. Now I'm going to place the crimp tube in one of the first three notches. I usually use the middle one and I'm placing it in there sideways because I want to fold it over. Check to make sure your beading wire isn't involved. And now I'm going to squeeze. As you can see, it folds that crimp tube over. And then I usually go to the tip to tighten it up. And that's all there is to it, guys. I really like that French wire. It gives it a very finished look. So now I'm going to attach one of these crimp tube covers. And my cat's coming over, so let me go rescue him before he knocks my beads over. He gets very needy and he wants to be on my lap all the time, which makes it challenging when I'm trying to film a tutorial. So let me see if I can do this now with a cat on my lap. I'm going to slide it in from underneath like this. I like to use these crimping pliers to close it. You do want to be careful though, because you don't want to dent that metal. I usually go all the way around to give it a nice round shape. And that's as good as it's going to get. I'll be honest guys, I don't like crimp tubes and I don't like crimp tube covers. But there it is, as you can see. So now I'm going to take the tail and thread it through two of these beads. And you may be hearing my cat purring right now. So now I'm going to cut off the excess. I'm going to use my good cutters for this. And now I'm going to slide the beads down. So now we're going to do the other side. Once again, I'm going to slide a crimp tube on first. And then the French wire. And the chain. And now I'm going to take my beading wire and thread it through the crimp tube again and through two of the beads. And I'm going to pull on the tail to take out the slack. You want to take out the slack, but you don't want it too tight. You want your bracelet to be fluid. I think that's good enough. So now I'm going to crimp it off. Once again, I'm going to place it in that first notch. Make sure your French wire is not in the way. And then give it a squeeze. Turn it sideways. And now I'm going to place it in one of the first three notches. I like the middle one. Check your French wire to make sure it's not in the way and then go ahead and fold it over and then tighten it up. And that's all there is to it. I'm going to snip off the excess. Slide on my crimp cover. I'm going in from underneath. like that. And now let me close it up. That's good enough. 
And that's all there is to it, guys. I think it's a beautiful bracelet. It's going to make a great gift. Here's my ball head pin, and here's my 5mm bead. I'm going to slide it onto the ball head pin like that. And now using round nose pliers, I'm going to grab the pin right above the bead like this. Bend it 90 degrees, switch to this part, take the tail and wrap it around the nose, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back. I'm not going to finish it with wraps just yet because I'm going to trim off this piece of chain. I don't like the chain to be that long. This is about two inches long, which is way too long. I think I'm going to remove about half of it. And since these links are open links, I'm just going to open one up instead of cutting it. So now I'm going to slide the link of the chain into the loop that I created, like this. I'm going to grab the loop with these pliers. I like using these for this purpose because they have a nice skinny tip. And now using another set of pliers, I'm going to grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. I think I'll do three. Let me cut off the excess. Tuck in that little sharp end. And there's my bracelet. Isn't it beautiful? I prefer the French wire to wire guardian, so I think it's more attractive. Let me put it on. There it is. Isn't it pretty? It's really pretty. I love those crystals. I would do up the clasp, but I need help for that. I can't do it by myself. But I'll have somebody help me at the end of this video, and then I'll model it for you. And you can use any one of these links. Which makes it the perfect gift for somebody. Because then you don't have to worry about their wrist size. So anyway, guys, for those of you who haven't used French wire, I hope I've helped you a little bit. And I hope I've given you some different options besides wire guardians. It does come in different colors. It comes in gold. And I've even seen it in bronze. I think Beadsmith sells it in bronze. And Beadalong does carry it in sterling silver as well. So that's another option for those of you who prefer higher quality metals. So let me go ahead and put this bracelet on. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.